In this video, we're having a look at how to put the WooCommerce product categories, in this case on the home page. What we do is we're pulling through an image. We're then pulling through the name, the number of items in that category in brackets, and then we have a custom field pulling through. To show you how that works, I'm going to update the music category. So let's go back to categories here, and let's go to the music category. Click on the music category, and we're just going to add an image. So we head over here to the thumbnail option, and we're going to add an image. And the image we're going to be adding will be, let's say, the album image. So we use the image, and then if I scroll to the bottom, we have this is custom music. So we'll just add some text in there. That's added with advanced custom fields, the free version. Once that's been saved, we're going to head over to the website. We're going to refresh the page. And now you'll see that music has a thumbnail. We have the title with the number of posts. And there is our custom field. If we select one of those items, we'll be redirected through to the music page in the shop. So that's the product category page. I'm going to head back. Right, now to show you how this all fits together. I'm first going to just quickly show you the custom fields and get that out the way. So you've seen how to update the category and the custom field that we have in the product category is set up as follows. So we just created some custom content. We called it custom content. It's a text field. Nothing special there. And we've just said show this field group if taxonomy is equal to category product cat. So that's all that we've done, and that then appears on the category page, and when updated, we now pull it through to the listing. If there's nothing in that custom content, then nothing pulls through. I'm now going to head over to Oxygen, and you'll see that we've created a code block here. And inside that code block, we have some custom code, and that is what is pulling through the items. So I'm just going to enlarge that code block. Right, so you'll see that we've done a WP term query. And what we've done now is we've pulled through just the taxonomy equal to product cat. There are a whole lot of different terms that you can use here when you're building your term query. Next, what we do is we have a look to see. And if there is a term, then we just do it for each loop through each term. What we do, though, the first thing that we've done here is get the category thumbnail ID and the second thing that we do is we get the image so the shop catalog image is WP get attachment image source and that's the cat thumbnail ID shop catalog and what we do then to get the cat thumb ID get WooCommerce term meta term ID thumbnail ID set to true so that code then returns the cat thumb ID and then we get the image using that cat thumb ID. The next thing that we do is we say right um, if there is any custom content then the custom content is equal to the get custom content which is the name of the custom field and then to get the ID for this particular product category that we're looping through on the for each loop we have to put in the prefix product cat product underscore cat underscore and then the term ID and that's the way that advanced custom fields then works to go and get that custom field if we don't put in the product cat and we just have term term ID no value will be returned for that custom field with that in place then we have a look here at setting up our layout so you'll see here we have some classes we have the term wrap which wraps around all the items. We then have the class for the term image. And we then have the class for the term names, which wraps around the term name. And also included in the term name then is the term count. So the term count will return the number of posts in the category. So we have the term count, which is preceded by the term name. To get the permalink to the to get the link to that category, we use get term link and then the term ID. And that's how we do the link to that particular term. 
and what I've done here is I've put the link on the title with the link and the custom content in one and over here for the image you'll see that although we have the closing tag we don't have the opening tag so I'm just going to add the opening tag for the link right so that would be our href link and that will go after the class for the term image so there we have the link right then we just close it off and if there are no categories then it will just echo no term found but highly unlikely that that'll happen to make the styling easier what I've done is I've created a content element here and it's just a series of divs and in those divs I've replicated the structure that we have in our post with those classes so if I want to make a change to the layout I can simply come along here make it to this div with the layout and it'll have an effect there so no need to flip between a custom style, style sheet and then back to the content so I can do that right here and to give you an idea of how that would work if I wanted to change the width to 33 percent you'll see now that the width has already changed for that layout change it back to 25 so you'll see a very nice and easy way to update the layout for your grid view that you're going to create for your content so the only um, styling that's really done to the code block because that covers all the items is we've had a look at the size and spacing and we've just made the width 100 percent and the other thing that we did on the layout is we set a flex layout to row and we've set the align items to stretch and we've set the flex wrap to wrap and that way we get a multi-line layout and that's about it in terms of styling on the uh, code block and then the rest of the styling we've added then to our, our divs which appear here and we've added then our styling to the divs so to show you what styling we've done so on the main div which is the class for the term wrap we did a layout so we did a vertical layout with all the elements centered and we've aligned to the top if I head to advanced you'll see that in our size and spacing we gave it a padding of 15 pixels and a width of 25 percent that's to make sure that we get four items in a row then in the layout flex column we did align items in center we justified content to flex start and we just set the overflow to hidden and then in the typography we've also just set that to centered so when we head over to the website you'll see that everything fits nicely inside our layout then uh, we have some other divs here so the next div we have is the term image and we just made that term image 100 percent wide just to make sure that the image fits within the width and then the last div that we have here at the bottom was the term name and you'll see that in terms of the term name we've set the width to 100 percent so under size and spacing with 100 percent and that's all that we've set but of course you can go ahead and style it a lot more and that's then how we uh, set it up to pull through the product category and then if you have any custom fields you can pull that information through to this loop as well if you want to know what other options are available inside the query so if I head back to the code block and if you want to have a look at what else is available under WP term query I'm just gonna show you where you can find that so we just head over to WordPress and inside WordPress here WP term query if you scroll down you'll see all that's available for this particular function so here we have the code if we expand the full code then you'll see that we have each item with an explanation a little bit hard to read there but if you scroll a little bit further you'll actually see the full list of all the options available in that term query so that does allow you to do quite a lot and to create the 
query that you want and you can also then do a search or a filter should I say by a meta key, a meta value, meta type, meta compare. So a whole lot that you can do if you're going to want to expand your view using the term query. So that's how it was put together. I'll include a link to the code in the description. So I hope you enjoyed that video and thank you for watching.